Learning objective uh, include how do various materials move across cell membrane? What is a passive movement? <clears throat> what is active movement? And what is osmosis? Now, passive movement, it is a movement with the, the concentration gradient. That means the substance would move from most concentrated place or area to less concentrated areas or places. In the passive movement, as the name indicates, no energy is required. And as I mentioned, that substances move from area of high concentration to low concentration of the solute. Active movement of molecule, on the other hand, is against concentration gradient. So molecules from low concentration can move towards higher concentration. And of course, for this to happen, energy is required. So ATP would be needed. Passive movement comes in two forms. One is a simple diffusion where the molecules start moving from higher concentration to lower concentration. And then when the concentration across the two sides of the membrane reaches at equal levels or becomes equal, that what we call equilibrium, then there is no net movement. The molecules, the number of molecules, they also they keep moving, of course, but the number that goes to this side, the same number goes from this side to this side. So there is no net movement. Of course, movement is there, but net movement is zero. Oxygen and carbon dioxide are examples of passive, simple diffusion. Other kinds of passive movement is a facilitated diffusion. This involves a, a carrier or a transporter, which is a protein most of the time. As you can see, that this molecule is a positively charged particle. Now, cell membrane, as you know, is a lipid bilayer. So lipid do not like charged molecules to go through this. So there, to facilitate the movement of such molecules through the membrane, uh, there is an integral protein that forms a channel. And this, trans, this channel is called as transporter or permease. It, it basically allows the penetration or movement of a molecule from one side to the other side, through or across the cell membrane. And of course, there is no, in, in all this, when this is happening, there is no energy required, and that is the reason we call it as a passive movement, although facilitated, but still passive. There is non-specific transporters. That means that some transporter, like this here in example, can transport maybe two or three different kinds of molecules. So they're not specific to just one kind or certain kinds. Many different kinds of molecules can move through this. So it's a non-specific carrier or non-specific transporter. On the other side or other hand, there is a protein which uniquely binds to certain components, certain chemicals. Like here, you could see that this is a channel or a protein that binds glucose. And it binds glucose from one side and then there is a change that happens in the molecule, and that change brings this molecule that was present on this side of the membrane to the other side of the membrane. And, and uh, sugars and vitamins are transported this way. And again, there is no energy required. If the molecule is large and it has to go through the cell membrane like a, a, a channel, as we saw in the previous slide here, it needs to be degraded by the enzymes that are released from the cell into the medium, into the surrounding, and then that larger molecule is broken down into smaller molecules, and then smaller molecules can easily pass through those channels. Water molecules can pass through lipid bilayer by simple diffusion, just by simple diffusion, although they, as I mentioned, that lipid bilayer uh, inherently does not allow water molecules to, to go through, but they can push themselves through based on the concentration gradient. But most of the, the water that goes from one side of the membrane to the other uses special channels that are called aquaporin, the protein channels. Now, what is osmosis? If we take a solute, any salt or like sugar, for example, and put that sugar uh, solution into 
a membrane which is semi-permeable. What does it mean by semi-permeable? That it, it does not allow these sugar molecules, for example, here to go or pass through this membrane and get into the beaker. But the water molecules on the other side can go from the beaker into, through the membrane, into the sac here. So after a while, you would see that because solvent, which is more in concentration here compared with here, this bag here, sac, water would move from the beaker into the sac, while the salt or the sugar molecules, because they are bigger molecules, they would not, they're not uh, allowed to pass through the membrane, so they would be retained inside. And at, at certain time point, there will be a period where the net movement of water molecule from here to here and here to there would be equal. And that is where we call that the water molecules have reached an equilibrium. Then if you measure, this is a, a, a glass tube inserted into the sac, as the water molecule would be pulled, attracted towards uh, within the sac by the sugar molecules or salt molecule, this water level would rise. And if we use any pressure or weight so that there would be no movement of water, that amount of weight would equal to the osmotic pressure. This is how we calculate osmotic pressure in the lab. Now, bacteria can be placed into three kinds of osmotic uh, solutions. If the osmotic pressure of the medium in which the bacterial cell is lying is the same as the osmotic pressure within the cell, there would be no net movement of water from outside the cell into the cell or from inside the cell out of the cell. So the number of molecules would stay the same. In this kind of solution is called isotonic solution. So the osmotic pressure is exactly equal inside the cell and outside the cell. And there would be no net change in the bacterial cell and the bacteria would survive. This is the osmotic pressure which is maintained when we prepare a medium for bacterial growth. So one of the component or one of the requirement for bacterial growth is that you must provide salts in the medium so that the osmotic pressure remains isotonic. Hypotonic solution is the one that the salt concentration is more inside the cell and the osmotic pressure, in other words, is less here. It is more there. So it is, now this is acting like a, a cellophane uh, bag that we saw in the previous uh, slide. So water molecule would be attracted because there is more osmotic pressure within the cell. It is less outside the cell. So water would move from this position to inside the cell. And as a result, the cell, said, cell would burst. And this is called osmotic lysis. On the other hand, if a solution in which the bacterium is lying, has more osmotic pressure, higher osmotic pressure than the, the cytoplasm, then what would happen? That because solute concentration is more here, it would attract water from within the cell. And, and water leaks out of the cell, the cell would shrink. And this is called plasmo, plasmolysis or plasmolysis. Now, active movement, as I mentioned earlier that it requires ATP, requires energy. Some nutrients move from, um, they need to move from lower concentration to higher, because the nutrients are not always present abundantly. The cell has to evolve or has to have some means or mechanism to attract or to have that food which is scarcely available there in the surrounding. So it requires ATP but the nutrients can move from lower concentration to higher concentration. So um, examples include sodium, potassium, hydrogen, calcium, and chloride, some amino acids, and sugar molecules also. But note, these, all these molecules, when they're abundantly present outside the, uh, outside, outside the cell in the medium, they can also uh, diffuse or go across the membrane passively when they're abundantly present. But then when they're low in abundance, then cell uses energy to bring them in.
during active transport, substances are usually not altered during that transport. But in what we call group translocation, the substances that are uh, being taken or moving from the outside of the cell into the cell using energy, uh, they are retained in the cell by a little modification. And glucose is one of them. So as the cell would acquire glucose or take glucose from the outside, um, uh, from the medium, it would change, uh, it would put another phosphate group on that. And this would become a larger, a bigger molecule and a modified molecule, which then remains within the cell. It does not get out of the cell. So in summary, there's a passive diffusion. Uh, molecules can move passively without using any ATP. And, but the thing is that it has a concentration gradient. So it is concentration gradient dependent. Passive movement is concentration gradient dependent. And there are two kinds, a simple diffusion and then a facilitated diffusion where there is a carrier or a transporter or a permease uh, protein that facilitate that movement. Active diffusion involves ATP um, for the transport of the, the molecules, and it goes against concentration gradient. And there are two kinds. In active transport, uh, molecules are not changed, but in group translocations, they are modified so that they, after the transport, uh, they remain within the cell.